Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with another OCHEM video. Topic today is going to be reactions with epoxides. So what is an epoxide? An epoxide is a cyclic ether, just like this, and it's a ring with three atoms in it, oxygen being one of them and carbons being the other two. Um, so this gives it some unique properties. First things first, having three atoms in a ring causes a lot of ring strain, and that makes these carbons highly susceptible to nucleophilic attack so that the ring can be opened. And in fact, virtually all reactions with epoxides that you'll be responsible for involve opening the epoxide ring somehow. We're gonna talk about different ways in a sec, but for now, just know that the ring strain makes these carbons more susceptible to attack and the epoxide more susceptible to opening. Another property, this is a carbon oxygen bond. This is a carbon oxygen bond. That's a polar bond, right? So these carbons take on a delta plus charge oxygen takes on a delta minus charge, that makes these carbons electrophilic and even more susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So now we see why reactions with epoxides are so versatile, right? We can do a lot of things with these carbons. So there are two types of reactions with epoxides or two categories that you'll probably be responsible for in your OCHEM course. First category is nucleophilic ring opening. That involves using a strong nucleophile to open the epoxide. We'll get into that. And the second category is acid catalyzed ring opening. That involves using an acid, protonating the oxygen, and then attacking with a relatively weaker nucleophile. So we're gonna get into all of that. Let's take a look at an example first of nucleophilic ring opening. Okay, so we have an epoxide here. These two are methyl groups. Uh, and we're gonna react this epoxide with some azide, right? Azide, N3 minus, it's a strong nucleophile. That's why this is called nucleophilic ring open opening. We're gonna use a strong nucleophile to open this ring. Here's, how, here's what the mechanism looks like, and then we're gonna talk about why the mechanism looks like that. So we get our N3, negative charge. It's going to attack the carbon right here. We'll talk about why in a sec. That'll open the epoxide ring. And now we'll have an O minus right here. Let's draw our carbon skeleton, one, two, one, two, and then the N3. And then finally, our two methyls are right here. Now we have an unhappy oxygen, so what do we do? We use workup. So we're gonna do a workup step, bring in water, have this oxygen deprotonate the water, and that gets us to our product. Remember, double arrows for any acid-base chemistry. So we made an alcohol, as you can see, one, two, one, two, and three, and our two methyls. Okay, so this is what the product would look like for this nucleophilic ring opening. Now let's talk about some things that you might have seen as I was drawing this. First things first, the N3 attacked this carbon, <clears throat> but not this carbon. Why? The answer is, in nucleophilic ring opening, you have regiospecificity. What that means is, the strong nucleophile will always attack the less substituted carbon. This carbon is tri-substituted, right? Three carbons attached to it. This carbon is only mono-substituted, right? Only one carbon attached to it. So due to sterics, right? Going back to SN2, strong nucleophile, you don't want a lot of sterics. So it makes sense that the strong nucleophile attacks at the less substituted carbon, okay? So that's what we mean by regiospecificity or regiospecific. So another property of uh, nucleophilic ring opening is you need a strong nucleophile. So what types of things that uh, can do nucleophilic ring opening? Well, first things first, any nucleophile that could do SN2, right? So SN2 nucleophiles, so basically any strong nucleophile, right? Negative charge. Um, two, uh, reducing agents like uh, LiAlH4 and NaBH4, right? Lithium aluminum hydride. Basically any sources of hydride, because remember uh, that H minus is a, can, can be a very strong uh, nucleophile, it attacks. Okay, and finally, our favorite, Grignard, Grignard reagents, right? The, oops, those are really strong nucleophiles, remember? So those are great for opening rings, okay? Another property of a nucleophilic ring, ring opening is you get inversion of stereochemistry. And that makes sense, right? It's basically a more complicated SN2 reaction. So in, in the case that we just saw, there was no stereochemistry at the attacked carbon. 
But in other cases, which we'll see, we'll go into examples, there is inversion at the attack site because you have a strong nucleophile attacking uh, a carbon, right? It's, it's SN2, basically. So you get inversion of stereochemistry at the attacked site. Okay, let's take a look at another example of nucleophilic ring opening, this time taking into account stereochemistry. So we have an epoxide right here, uh, cyclopentane over here, um, but that's the epoxide part. And we have a, a dashed methyl coming off of this carbon. So what do we know about Grignard reagents? This is a Grignard reagent. We know that it's a very strong nucleophile, so we're going to be dealing with this territory right here, nucleophilic ring opening. So what's going to happen first, you're going to have nucleophilic attack at the less substituted carbon, which is here, not here, right? It's this one. So we attack with our Grignard reagent at that carbon, open the epoxide, and that gives us, okay, we have a dashed, right? The Grignard reagent now attached is dashed because it was a wedge over here. We have oxygen with a minus charge, right? Because it accepted those electrons. And we have our wedged CH, or sorry, our dashed CH3. Stereochem doesn't change here, it only changes here. Uh, last but not least, work up, right? You can't have water together with the, with the Grignard reagent, otherwise it'll explode. You, don't, you can't have polar product. So you need a work up step. That happens here. This oxygen will deprotonate one of those hydrogens double arrows because acid-base chemistry, and our product looks like this, okay? So we made an alcohol once again. So just going over the steps, attack at the less substituted carbon, kick the electrons up, up to the oxygen that opens the epoxide. Oxygen gets a negative formal charge, protonate it, make an alcohol. And remember, inversion of stereochemistry. So now let's talk about the second category for epoxide ring opening, and that's called acid catalyzed ring opening. The mechanism is slightly different, so let's just dive in. What happens in an acid catalyzed ring opening is the following. You have your epoxide, right? Your standard epoxide. But now in the presence of an acid, this oxygen will become protonated. We'll go through examples, but this is just the generic scheme. It'll become protonated, form a positive, uh, positive formal charge, right? And let's just say one carbon is more substituted than the other carbon, okay? Now, instead of the nucleophile coming in and attacking the less substituted carbon, which it would in nucleophilic ring opening, it'll attack the more substituted carbon. And that's because of this positive formal charge. Okay, so we have this epoxide, two methyl groups coming off of this carbon, but we're reacting with an acid now, HBr. So what's going to happen first is this oxygen is going to deprotonate that HBr, or you could say the HBr will protonate the oxygen. Both are true. Okay. And now what we have is this. Remember, acid-base chemistry gets double arrows. We have an oxygen with a formal, positive formal charge. We have our two methyl groups right here, and we're good. So now what's hanging around in solution is Br-, minus, right? Br- minus is hanging around in solution. But because we're dealing with acid catalyzed ring opening and not nucleophilic ring opening, it's going to attack on the more substituted carbon, which is this guy right here. Okay, it'll attack that carbon, send those uh, electrons up to oxygen, and we have our answer. Notice that we don't need to worry about oxygen having a negative formal charge and protonating it because it's been protonated. That was the first step. So our product looks like this. First things first. Remember, this is regiospecific as well because we're, we have to attack the more substituted carbon. Also notice um, that we didn't need deprotonation afterwards because the first step was protonation. All right, so let's take a look at another example of acid catalyzed ring opening. Here you might recognize sulfuric acid. And here we have another epoxide, this time with a wedged methyl coming off of this carbon. Uh, so what's going to happen first, we said protonation, right? Because there's a lot of acid. So this oxygen will deprotonate the hydrogen, the acidic hydrogen of sulfuric acid. And now we have a protonated epoxide, okay? So now we have our protonated epoxide, right? But now what do we have? We have a weak nucleophile hanging around in solution. This carbon, right, is more... Uh, substituted than this carbon, so the weak nucleophile will attack the more substituted carbon. Here we have MESH, behaves pretty similarly to MEOH. 
Let's just draw it like this, our MESH. So the sulfur, the MESH, is going to attack the more substituted carbon, send those electrons over to oxygen. And now we're not done yet. We have one more step to think about. So we're at this point, but notice that now sulfur has three bonds to it, so it'll have a plus formal charge. And also notice that I switched the stereochem at this site, right? Attack at the uh, more substituted carbon also yields inversion of stereochem. So both of these involve inversion of stereochem, nucleophilic and acid catalyzed ring opening. So we have inversion, right? The S is now wedged, whereas the methyl was wedged before. But now to, to, to deal with this formal charge, all we have to do is deprotonate it. So we'll have another MESH in solution, right? Let's just draw that over here. And that'll serve to deprotonate this hydrogen right here. Remember double arrows now because we're dealing with acid-base chemistry, deprotonation. And now we can draw our final product. And now we have sulfur with two bonds, it's happy, perfect, and we're good. All right, so that's epoxide reactions in a nutshell. I'll probably make another video with a bunch of uh, practice problems involving epoxides. Uh, normally they aren't too tricky. Just remember that when you're dealing with acid catalyzed, uh, oftentimes you will have to deprotonate, like in the case we just had, because the nucleophile is sometimes weak. Uh, and in that case, it often has a hydrogen attached to it that you have to deprotonate. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and uh, I hope that helped.